so my artist was just randomly drawing a Tomura Shigaraki fan art and I said okay uh, I make my next story a Tomura Shigaraki fanfic and she said hey that's fine so here's a Tomura Shigaraki fan fiction <clears throat> hello my darlings it's Zui here and today I'm delivering you a Tomura Shigaraki ex listener fan fiction I hope you enjoy it just as much as I did writing it but before we delve right into the story, I would like to remind you that I have a Patreon and a merch store. And I would greatly appreciate it if you could check both of them out. Lastly, if you cannot support me financially, you can do it more indirectly by making YouTube do its fucking job. Simply watch the video until the end, like it, and if you're new here and think I'm worth it, subscribe. You can also dislike it. Dislikes and likes are treated the same on the YouTube algorithm. Lastly, I would like you to share this video around. If you can get any person interested in my videos, I will be eternally grateful to you. Also again, remember to subscribe. Enjoy my beautiful darling army. No, please. Enjoy the show. Honestly, the only reason you joined the League of Villains was sheer desperation and your love for bad boys. You didn't have a broken moral compass, nor did you have any desire to needlessly kill. Admittedly, you did have a problem with virtue signaling and hypocrisy. And an organization like the League flat out told you that their goal was power and control. You just had interned in way too many hero agencies and were completely disillusioned with hero culture because of it. Strangely enough, they had accepted you, despite your lack of violent tendencies and overall uselessness in combat. Right now, you are napping in a hammock outside of the mobile base Korogiri had set up. It was basically an oversized camping van set up at a small forest next to an abandoned building. Most of the guys were set up inside the building, but you and Toga had decided to stay in the van for privacy. The past few days have been particularly turbulent. Something about the League getting involved with the Yakuza. And judging by Shigaraki's excitement, it must have been the conclusion of a plan they, as per usual, didn't involve you with. After all, you were quirkless. The cracking of a stick shook you awake, with the sudden jolt of adrenaline making you fall out of your hammock. Ouch! You grumbled while crawling up on your feet. Kurugiri, next time I want you to teleport us closer to the van. You heard Shigaraki's voice. My apologies, Tomura Shigaraki, but the risk of someone jumping after us last second before I can close the portal is too great. Answered the shadowy man as three figures came into view. Mr. Compress, Kurogiri, and the titular leader of the League of Villains. Hey guys! You shouted while waving towards them. Did you do it? Whatever it was? The three men approached you. The two of them whose faces you could actually make out looked surprisingly bright. Even the usually brooding Tomura had an uplifting smile on his face. The mission was a great success said Compress while playing around with a blue marble. We need to celebrate. The man looked at Kurogiri. Why not make drinks for all of us? The purple shape quickly nodded, and the two men excused themselves, leaving you alone with your boss. So, boss, what was all the secrecy about? At first I just wanted to strengthen our numbers, but then... He paused and pulled out a small wooden box. This came into our possession. But it's a surprise. 
First, Korogiri needs to do some tinkering with it. He chuckled darkly. Well, I'm just happy you guys are okay. Giving him an optimistic smile, his cheeks began to tint ever so lightly. Uh, we uh, should probably go to the others. I'm not missing out on those cocktails. You stuttered. Whenever you made Shigaraki blush, you just had to blush too. The celebration of a well-fought victory went deep into the night. Everyone was either wasted or in the process of becoming wasted. You and Shigaraki seemed to be the only sober ones once the clock at midnight. Suddenly, the drunken fun was interrupted by Spinner, however, who demanded everyone to calm down for just a minute. Despite not being part of this wonderful operation, he began, I, I just want to say to each and every one of you, Kenji would have been proud of all of us. Dobby raised a shot glass in approval. Let's have a toast and a moment of silence. Spinner said in a celebratory yet somber tone. The lizard man grabbed a full bottle of whiskey from a table that stood in the middle of the rundown living room and slowly began to spill its contents on the ground in respect. Once the bottle was half empty, Spinner shrugged and exed the rest in a single large gulp. And the party continued. Now with a somewhat mellow tone, if it weren't for Toga endlessly flirting with both Twice and Darby, both men having a really difficult time declining her advances due to their drunken states. You found yourself looking over at Shigaraki, who was sunken in on a seat staring at his half-empty glass of orange juice. Boss, you look sad. Wasn't the mission as successful as you thought? The grey-haired man shook his head and jumped up. Look, why don't we take a walk for a moment? He asked you, quiet enough so no one but you heard him. After a quick nod, you followed him outside. The house you were all crashing in had a backyard, and despite being completely overgrown, it still had a properly working yet rusted bench, and, even more surprising, a working fountain that was covered in moss. Tomura sat down on the rusty bench and petted the spot next to you, and you joined him. This mission was very important after I realized what the Hisaikai had in their possession. For a moment, he looked at you, before he returned to look at me at the ground. They had this girl in custody. And I don't know how, but apparently her blood can disable quirks. Your eyes widened, but you let him continue. So I thought to myself, what would be the best use for a weapon like that? His features hardened, and with a head tilt he pointed towards his hands. All five fingers were touching the rusty old bench. But it wasn't decaying any further. You gasped. Tomura, did... did you delete your quirk? No, I, I'm, I'm not insane, no, no. Uh, I... I just took one of these. He pulled out a blue vial. They have, like... Half the dosage required to completely disable a quirk for a long time. He grinned. They made a handful of them for me after I requested it. You raised an eyebrow. Why would he request something like that? But why would you use it on yourself? I mean, you 
You could probably use it very well to put Darby in his place when he starts talking smack about you. You suppressed a chuckle. Being lighthearted and laughing just felt disrespectful right now. Do you remember when we took you in? A quirkless, completely useless civilian. Being called useless stung a bit, but he was right. Yeah, I had been evicted because all I ever got were internships and no real job, so they kicked me out because I couldn't pay the rent. You looked up into the sky. I'd been running around all day trying to find something, anything that could help me, and... Uh, and... You became teary-eyed and couldn't finish. So Shigaraki finished the story for you. And you fell asleep in the alley next to our old base. He paused. But... Do you want to know why we didn't kill you and turn your body into ash? With a gulp, you had realized that you'd never asked that question. That thought didn't even occur to you. You had just accepted your new life because anything was better than being alone in the cold. No, was your reply. And he gave a small but hearty laugh. <laughs> well, I felt something. Pity. First time I ever felt something like that. For a person that isn't myself. You returned to look at him. Was he... Was he opening up to you? Wait. He took the quirk blocking blood. I... He started. I came to appreciate you and every second we spent together. Was, was this a confession? And I've been wondering if maybe... Uh, maybe... He fell silent and the blush returned to his cheeks and his lower lip began to twitch. It was obvious that on his own he would never be able to finish the question. Taking initiative, you took his calloused hand in yours, feeling only a slight hint of fear when your fingers touched each other for the first time. What were you wondering? came your question after your eyes met and his face grew soft. Do you... Do you want to be my girlfriend? Even Shigaraki say these words to you. It felt like the night had turned to day. And you felt the rainbow of emotions take hold of your heart. And you embraced his slender frame. His arms wrapped around your waist, hands rubbing greedy circles into your back. I don't... I don't know what to say. You heard him sob into your ear. I'm just so happy. I finally, finally get to touch something with my entire hand again. Without the fear of breaking something I love. Your only reply was tightening your embrace. Feeling his bony figure breathe under you. You remained like this for about six minutes. Until he could speak again. This uh, effect is... Only very temporary. Roughly two hours. And we already wasted 80 minutes. 
You chuckled into his ear and pulled out your throwaway phone. Then just let me set an alarm for 39 minutes. He whimpered. Thank you. And continued his very needy hug. <laughs>